Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel, another Swiss 001 video. Now welcome back to the Flight Simulator uh, X-Plane, which is, you know, the standard flight simulator that we like to use on this channel. We're right now on the island of Mallorca, which is a Spanish island, but that's another story. That's literally not what we're here for at all. Today, we're actually here to mess around with this flight simulator, and to be more specific with the weather engine that this flight simulator does, of course, have. <laughs> um, you know, we have done a few experiments so far, like trying to fly planes in extremely hot weather as we can see here we can simply change the temperature that we have going on outside and we can even go beyond realism actually and just like 300 degrees of celsius temperatures here which actually does work in real life this plane would kind of start to melt a little bit what does change though is definitely how the plane flies and as you can see we are barely able to gain speed and especially we are barely able to gain lift works quite a bit better than i uh, anticipated but as you can see this this plane has very low performance and that's actually why planes do not particularly like flying at hot places you know dubai for example most airliners actually operate at night when you know there's not so much uh, hotness going on we're very nice shoes of wording i know but y you know what i'm talking about right planes they obviously have to adapt to weather situations now today we're going to talk about another phenomenon of weather and that is air density and how that one affects the flying of, of a plane right of course yeah see what we can change here in this flight simulator definitely is the barometric pressure at sea level which is the air density or the air pressure you know yeah right now tuned in is the standard atmospheric pressure that we have on this planet which is 1013 hectopascals um in america they obviously don't use hectopascals they use uh inches and the standard of that here on this planet is 29 or 9 or 2, I think. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I don't live in America, so I'm not super familiar, but sounds about right. Now, that is the average air pressure that we have on this planet on sea level. Well, and of course, that number is very important for planes, because that's how, for example, the altimeter instrument works, obviously. Right now, of course, we have an air pressure going on of 10.13. There we go. We have that tuned in. And, well, yeah, that's how we can read altitude. Of course, we, you know, we all know that stuff. Yeah, there we go. We can uh, simply take off. We have very normal conditions, actually. By the way, the average temperature on this planet is 15 degrees Celsius, which we have uh, now. There we go. That is like the standard weather that we have on this planet. Everything is looking good. As you can tell, this plane can perfectly fly in this condition, obviously. <laughs> I would be worried if it uh, didn't, but all right. Now, we all know that air density definitely affects a plane. For example, of course, you know, obviously at a high elevation, air pressure isn't as as high as at a lower elevation, for example, sea level, we're basically flying at sea level right now. Here, the air pressure is higher, which basically means that planes have more air to work with, and so they fly easier. Which is, for example, why this airport down here doesn't need that long of runways. Again, because it is at sea level, but when you're at a higher elevation, you obviously need longer runways, like at Denver. Let's go very quickly to Denver. That one has an elevation of 5,400 feet, which is probably why it has one of the longest runways, pretty much 4,000 1,800 meters, which is ridiculously long. There we go. This is the runway that we've got here at Denver. The longest one. Again, 4,800 meters, which is a lot. <laughs> Genuinely. But, you know, it does make sense that Denver has a long runway like this. Again, because it is at a very, very high elevation. Where the air pressure is lower. Alright, but we'll come back to uh, sea level again. Now, as promised, let's go ahead and mess around a little bit with air pressure, and especially here the settings in the flight simulator. Let's, for example, enter a very, very low air pressure, which, again, and is going to decrease the performance of this plane, I guess. Let's just do that. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and set the rate to zero. Is that possible? Zero? Zero inches? Damn. Barometric pressure at sea level is now zero inches. See what it does to the plane in the first place. Of course, as we can tell, the instruments are very confused. Right now, the altimeter of this plane thinks that we're at 26,000 feet, which is not particularly true. We would have to set the altimeter to zero, of course, since we have set that in the flight simulator in order to actually get an accurate result here in the altimeter, right? But let's go ahead and um, just try taking off and see if that is possible. You know, how does it actually affect flying of the plane, the air pressure? All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, get this engine off. And well, this doesn't particularly work at all. Damn. All right, what do we got now? I Oh, uh, air pressure zero. Wait, doesn't that mean that we have zero air on, on, on this planet, right? Yeah, it does definitely make sense. The engines of this plane obviously don't have any air to suck in and push 
out. Let's go ahead then and uh, get a little bit of a more realistic air pressure then. So that we do have at least a little bit of air pressure on here. Okay, let's go for um, the lowest air pressure that was ever measured at a place on this planet, which was 25.69 inches. Uh, very interesting. So let's see how that plane flies here. It should at least work. I mean, at least now we do have a little bit of air in this atmosphere and we have lost a a lot of FPS due to this uh, smoke that's been generated. There we go. It's, it's working a little better now. Okay, let's go ahead and take off then, simply. Um, see how the plane works in atmospheric conditions like this. All right, there we go. Okay, the plane, it does, well, it does work. We are building up some speed, even though we are slow compared to, obviously, the normal conditions. Plane does need a long runway here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take off. Damn. Yeah, the plane really does not like these conditions there. We are barely climbing and we are still losing speed. Yeah, this plane really has lost a lot of its performance, but let's get rid of some more of that performance there. Again, now this plane has a lot less air to work with at the moment. Okay, let's go for two zero inches then. See how that works. There we go. We are losing more and more speed. A lot less particles that the engines and the wings, of course, are able to work with. A uh, plane does still kind of fly. That is good. And we are still climbing a little bit, even though we're climbing only at 1,700 feet per minute, but it does kind of work. We are kind of still building up some speed. This plane, it does fly, which is good. Let's go ahead and change that by uh, going even lower on the air pressure. Go for one zero. There we go. The air is getting thinner and thinner. Let's go ahead. Oh, wow. Well, we are barely actually um, maintaining our speed of 142 knots while trying to climb a little bit, but it doesn't particularly work. Yeah, this plane totally is at its maximum limits to genuinely maintain somewhat of a flight. As you can see here, the wings are barely gaining lift here while flying at 100% power, by the way, of course. This is interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, get this even lower at this rate. Let's go for zero, zero, decimal, five, zero. See how that works. Oh, we have lost our speed. Oh, no. Plane cannot fly at all, actually, anymore. We're falling down to the ground pretty much, obviously. There are obviously not enough uh, air particles to uh, maintain somewhat of a lift. So let's go ahead and uh, get this number up again. Let's go for uh, zero, decimal, nine, zero, I guess. Which uh, does kind of not work at all. Damn. That was, of course, a huge jump there. Let's maybe go back to a little bit of a normal... Of pressure that let's go for at least like five or something have uh, five inches let's see how that works that's what she said <laughs> all right let's see if we can uh, take off this plane out of here and as you can see right here we have this smoke boat building up here again which is interesting oh and we are barely able to move actually we will definitely need this whole runway <laughs> all right come on damn all right, let's just uh, go ahead and use cheats and see if this somehow works. Well, it doesn't. Uh, we're kind of falling out of the skies at the moment. All right. Now, of course, something else I want to try out is the other end of the spectrum. You know, flying with a higher air pressure than usual, which will mean that the aircraft will have more air to work with in this case, which uh, means that the airplane will have more performance. Let's go for uh, 3.00 inches or something. There we go. Now, right now, I do have the altimeter set to the normal atmosphere conditions, which means that the airplane right now thinks that we are at minus 1,800 feet, which is interesting. Go ahead and take off. This will definitely not be any issue at all. And we'll have a lot more performance than usually. So this, again, this will not be any issue there. Let's go ahead. All right. 100 knots easily reached. And we can actually, I think we can already gain lift perfectly fine. That was no issue at all. I think we can even, you know, go for a little bit of a vertical takeoff or something. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, really not that much of an issue there with this 737-800. But now this 32 inches that we were just flying it was, by the way, the highest ever recorded air pressure on this planet, somewhere in uh, Mongolia. So that's interesting. Okay, then let's go ahead and uh, get this a little bit more interesting. Let's go for like 80. <laughs> there we go. Right, there we go. We have got 80 going. The plane thinks that we're at minus 7,000 feet. Let's see how this plane flies at this kind of air pressure. All right, there we go. I think we're already able to take off. Ha! <laughs> that, that, uh, that was very interesting indeed. Damn. Let's check out this takeoff again here in the replay mode. I think that was no issue at all. There we go. Take off run. We literally used uh, like 60 meters of this runway. Very interesting. I think we can even take this a little further. Yeah, this is definitely what the flight simulator was made for. Just messing around with the settings. All right, I think actually here the limit is 60 inches, uh, which we did reach now. All right, that's kind of sad, but you know, that's uh, more than enough to, as you can see, fly this plane off within just <laughs> like two seconds of takeoff run. I mean, we can take this further with another type of plane, I guess, like uh, a space shuttle. Uh, this one has running engines, which in this kind of well, <laughs> air pressure uh, definitely helps as well. There we go. This plane flies like butter. There we go. Yeah, so we can definitely 
tell air pressure affects a plane and how it flies. Lower air pressure means better flying. Higher air pressure means, you know, <laughs> less performance, I guess. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.